All right, time for the follow up. <laughs> uh, where's the frame data bot? So this will be a follow up for Rise Shifter. Um, yeah, good news, bad news time. Bad news, I still have no idea what the fuck I'm doing in this Eliza matchup. Uh, good news, I had time to make a video. Uh, sorry, man. Yeah, so I, I was watching, I was watching, I rewatched my video, hopefully to try and avoid any, any sort of ground that I didn't already cover, and I watched Master Spreader's video to make sure I'm not covering he already covered. And I don't, I don't, I don't really know if there's much else I have to add. I just think it's kind of like a, it's like an awkward, it was just an awkward set from how well the Eliza utilized movement and then combined with the unfamiliarity and the matchup and how to approach felt very awkward. So I'm just going to give my thoughts on it. We'll have the match playing in the background. I don't think there's anything else that I really had to add or say per, per se. So I'm on match 16 and I, I watched the win and that was that was also interesting. Uh, we'll start, we'll, we'll watch that later. But, and I think my biggest issue is that it feels like match 16 is not that much different from like match one through three, right? You're, you're, you have some, some adaptations in versus how the Eliza's, how you deal with like some strings and certain stuff, but your offense feels a l very much the same, right? You see the occasional rip, you see the occasional like adaptation in terms of gameplay and adaptation uh, with, you know, I see a bit more Corsa before one plus two, which is cool, but it doesn't, and, and I guess like the power crush, but it doesn't necessarily feel like there's that much variety in your timings and offense, right? Which the Eliza just kind of gets to hang back and do whatever, right? They're like right here, this sequence after you get the Oki combo, this is like the only time any sort of crazy offense or something out of the ordinary, right? Your your MO throughout this entire set has just been, let me poke a bunch, let me get some quick pokes in and then quickly, quickly back away. But it's like, there are times where, like I agreed at the, like at the start, I like, talked about that you're being way too greedy with your pressure when she has bar. But let's take for example, like the start of this round, right? Round starts, you get some pokes in, right? Uh, down four, back, and then back four, and then you back away. Why? Right? She doesn't have any meter. She, you have enough of a life lead where you can worth like going a bit more aggressive. And in this situation, let's say like she did the back dash into duck, right? But if you did something like corsicle forward one, who cares if she's holding down forward? You, she can't low parry you, right? You're not gonna have to worry about some crazy invincible offense. You're gonna, she's not, she, she's doing the duck. She's not, she's not backing, dashing into, um, into the air dash, right? Um, or into the dive kick. So just little bits of hesitation of trying to press your advantage when the Eliza doesn't have as many resources to work with, stuff like that. And then just overall, you really gotta spice up your offense, right? So, so there's two there's two aspects I'm gonna talk about. Spicing up the offense through utilizing various techniques, mainly like you do a lot of like one, two, one, two and into, into pokes but just doing one two into movement right so let's because you do a lot of you do a lot of commitment onto the back one uh tech frame trap right but a, a sidestep would have achieved the similar result right because you're you're utilizing the back one in areas where you would have beaten out a jab but in those same areas you could just as easily sidestep and fang's got like an average sidestep so there's no reason why you can't just also sidestep because avoiding the commitment to the move and instead focusing on the movement you can see what the eliza does and adjust accordingly you're not committing to like a sidestep move you just sidestep and then hold back if she doesn't move you go for like a quick whiff punish if she doesn't do a move you can so you can go okay in the future i don't think she'll challenge me if she sees a sidestep so maybe i'll implement like a sidestep mix-up right and then just doing a lot more utilizing of more of Fang's kit. Um, we all have our preferences, and I think I talked about this in the last video, but 
I'm not necessarily saying you need to change up your full game plan and go all in on sidestep mix-ups and back turn mix-ups, but what I'm saying is there has to be a bit more of a focus on, okay, here I'm going to do jabs into sidestep two and then try to, and then do down back from, from the back turn to bait a whiff or to create, like, to see what the opponent does. Gain more information as to what this opponent likes to do. And once I start to notice that they're more passive, okay, let me do more of my more of my more risky but rewarding options, right? Um, unfortunately, we can't have we can't all have Cooney back turned down to. God, that low is so dumb. But however, right? You you have these options, and because the Eliza never really had to deal with it that much, it just never felt like. It, basically, you you weren't using things one of Feng's strongest options where, you know, he's the fucking turtle cracker. He has all of these options that mentally tax the opponent, right? It's it's like Yoshi and any of those mix-up characters. It's like you have a huge bag of tricks. However, the plus side of Feng is that these bag of tricks, these moves are actually pretty solid, right? They're not overpowering or amazing, but they're awesome and they're there. And you want to use them to supplement it. If you just keep doing forward dash into one, two, into back four, right? But you do, let's say, a forward dash into a sidestep and then block, right? Don't don't commit to a move like right here. You do you do core circle four one plus two core circle one and then you dash forward into back three three, where the evasiveness clearly doesn't work out because you're doing a move from the sidestep, right? You're doing the we all know doing the move from the sidestep extends your hurt box and then you just get fucked over because Tekken seven has never met like a fucked up interaction that it didn't like, right? This game's whack. But if you just did the sidestep instead and then possibly, most more than likely, I don't think you would have whiffed, but you would have at least just blocked whatever the Eliza was doing. And if she commits to, if she commits to like the uppercut, then you can go for an easy, easy whiff punish, right? I think she drops it, but it's whatever. Um, yeah, and, and so it's, it's, it's that very, really, really you gotta vary up your timings and mix-ups. Ah, oh, excuse me. Uh, oh god, allergies. Um, yeah, and, and so it's, it's mainly just that, where I felt like there was a lot of, a lot of rigidity in your offense, which, which hurt you in the long run. Um, and I feel like part of it could be just, like, a lack of unfamiliarity with Eliza's options, so you weren't necessarily sure what options to go for, but that's what the experiment, exper experimenting is there for, right? Like, you just go... All right, we'll try out sidestep two into some back turn stuff or just some other mix up, and if it works out, cool. If it doesn't, noted for the future, and just continuously evolving that play. Uh, we'll play that play out, but excuse me. I'm, this is, okay, so we're going to dive into a bit more personal opinion stuff, but I don't know how much that lasts, so we'll, we'll, we'll just do, what are there, anything on combos? Punishment's rough, I mean, it's that situation of you gotta, you gotta just focus on, you know, burning that matchup, it is what it is. Um, there are certain areas where... There are certain areas where it's like questionable decisions, like right there with the <laughs> slash kick, and then we'll see like right after this. Like, what a what about this match so far has led you to go? Okay, my opponent who has been dashing around the entire round has been has been very um, has been very you know. 
the, like it's really hard to pin this Eliza down, right? What about this Eliza has suddenly made you go, all right, I'm just gonna do a slash kick and three, a tilde four, and it'll work out, right? So questionable, questionable kind of adjustments to that. Obviously, it's tricky for Feng to like lock down a character at ranges, right? But doing stuff like forward forward two, doing stuff like back four when the Eliza rushes in at you, stuff like that, that can like, that'll, that'll discourage, uh, like, ideally discourage some of the sidestep stuff going on. Um, like right here where, where you got the three to three until the four. As maybe as risky as it is, but that should have been, you know, down forward three plus four, right? And so stuff like that, where it's like, okay, you have to, you have to, you have to do more in order to make sure that you're actually locking down the opponent and you're not just like, all right, uh, I'm going to hope that this move works out in my favor. Uh, combo slash. I thought your combos were fine. Oki was fine. Personal opinion stuff. I'm of the opinion that Fang needs to be way more annoying than, than he is, than you're currently playing him, right? Was it this round? Yeah, 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 I think it was this round. Wait. Okay, so look 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 at this right here, right? She runs in. She runs in. Oh. Run in, sidestep, right? And then look at this round, right? Playing a distance, run in, sidestep. So Stuff like that, where it's like, okay, this opponent's running in. I'm, cl she's clearly just gonna, she's, she's gonna focus more on, like, okay, the opponent's running in. They've sized up the bunch. They're, I don't think they're gonna, gonna commit to a move. Let me do back four to keep them in check. Stuff like that. Um, but, sorry, tangent. Um, oh my god, these allergies. I believe Fang should be way more annoying and harder to pin down than you're currently playing him, right? Like a lot of these commitments to strings should just be like, all right, let me do down back four into Kempo and get the fuck out of there, right? Make the Eliza work to like pin you down as much as she is, right? Like right there, right here after this down back three, or you get the down four. Do something like down back one into Kempo, just get out of there, and then start doing like side steps to help mix up your timings. It's it's like how do I put this? The 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 aggressive nature didn't mesh well with the tools you were utilizing at the time. The Eliza's movement constantly counteracted your, your the times you chose to go for some of these big, bigger, bigger reads or payoffs and stuff. And it didn't, it wasn't, it was just kind of like, you were too, you were too aggressive and overcommitment in, er in times when you shouldn't have, right? And then there are times where you overcorrected where you kind of just backed off and let and let the Eliza just kind of run away. I'm not necessarily saying like go super super passive, super um, evasive and stuff like that, but just a bit more of the, on the patience, uh, focusing more on okay, got my pokes in, um, uh, or like right when you got like the down back three, you got the hit in, you went for down four, and then instead of committing to instead of committing to a back one for a read on a parry or something, just backdash, right? Even even if she she did like some big move, it wouldn't have been got it wouldn't have gotten to you in time where you could have just blocked with the backdash, right? So something like down back three, backdash, she whiffed a button, down back three again. And then from that set for the second down back three, then do like wall standing one and stuff like that. Constantly 
constantly just kind of yeah just really mixing up really mixing up your timings with movement and then doing a bit more to like mentally tax your opponent when i'm facing feng i should be worried about all the tools that he has at the start i will be but as the matches progress if i just don't see like a sidestep four as often or if i see it once in a blue moon and then never again i'm never really gonna have to worry about that move and i can spend more energy and time focusing on other stuff right uh it's yeah it, ultimately that's just the overarching theme of like utilizing more timing utilizing more ways to mix up your timings whether it's through movement whether it's through utilizing fangs other tools in in different in different combinations uh ultimately or ultimately yeah i mean that's just kind of where where i'm at watching the video currently uh if you have any further questions let me know or i know master spreader was doing some revision so he can he'll be definitely be able to provide more like fang specific stuff than i would be able to you know so just give it a shot um and yeah hope it helped and let me know if you have any questions or anything